Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to this week's episode of The Weekly Option. This is episode number 11, and today is Saturday, May the 26th. 2018. Um, Hope you had a great trading week. Uh, Certainly turned out to be a a good week for me, although I had a few challenges early on and I'll get to those later. Also appreciate some of the feedback I've heard from uh, those of you who are listening to the show. Uh, Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's eric at theweeklyoption.com. So uh, this past week, the Dow finished. Uh, it was actually a pretty quiet week in the market. Uh, the Dow ended the week only 38 points higher, uh, closing off on Friday yesterday at 24,753. The S&P 500 was also just slightly higher. Uh, only ran up eight, 8.36 points this week. Uh, so it finished at 2,721 and 33 cents. So both indices finished uh, less than half a percent up on the week. So we'll call that roughly up unchanged. Um, As far as economic news that we're looking forward to this week, uh, I think the biggest thing is, I think it's on Wednesday, uh, we're going to get an adjustment for our first quarter GDP estimate. The last one uh, looked to be about 2.3% on an annualized basis. And uh, analysts are expecting that number to be lowered down to 2.2% on an annualized basis. So uh, that's what to expect there. Uh, always like to start off looking at, at, the, at the earnings that are expected this coming week. Uh, sometimes that's a great source of disruption, you know, a known piece of news that should cause a little bit of market volatility and possibly produce some great trades for us. So Uh, Of course, this Monday is Memorial Day. I'd like to take a moment to thank those of you who have have served the country and continue to do so. We appreciate your hard work. And uh, so the markets will be closed on Monday. What would that be? Monday, uh, the 28th of May. On Tuesday, we'll look to hear from Booz Allen and Hewlett Packard. Booz Allen is obviously the uh, consulting company and HP Hewlett Packard, the technology firm. Uh, On Wednesday, we're going to hear from some retailers, DSW, uh, the shoe warehouse, the guests, and uh, Michael Kors, the designer. On Thursday, we have a few more. We've got Lululemon, American Eagle, and then we'll hear from Costco, Dollar Tree, and Dollar General. And on Friday, uh, the last company I'd be looking at is the retailer Abercrombie & Fitch. So that's what to expect for this upcoming week. And now for let's let's take a look at the trades that occurred last week. So we'll start off with the covered call. Uh, I suggested a covered call on a company called MongoDB, symbol MDB, Mary Dog Boy. We looked at the June 45 call and sold that for two dollars. So the stock at the time was trading for forty three dollars thirty eight cents. So we hoped basically for an 8.34% return. And that is that uh, is the difference between the 45 strike and where stock was $43.38. So we've got $1.62 there and then another $2 that we're receiving from selling that call option. That's uh, how I got the 8.34% return on, on our uh, capital. Well, what happened this week? The stock rose to $44.99, so it's one penny shy of being uh, right at the strike uh, that we sold, the June 45 call. With that, if the stock finishes here or any higher at expiration, not only will we get to keep that $2 premium, but we will have made $1.61 in our actual stock, and that leads to an 8.5% return in the month, a really 8.34% return in one month. June expiration, of course, is three weeks from now. It'll be on June the 15th. So our break-even price is still $41.31. I'm sorry, $41.38. So as long as as we don't let stock go any lower than that price, we will make a positive gain on this trade. 
So very uh, that it's always great when those work out. So that's what to expect on that covered call. We also looked at a credit spread last week, which is when we were, we're going to look at a call spread that we're going to sell. We sold, actually, past tense. <laughs> we sold the diamonds, the, uh, the ETF on the Dow Industrial Index, the Dow Jones Index. So we sold the diamonds 249, 250 call spread, and the stock was sitting at $247 when we did the trade. We sold the spread for $0.36, cents, so our maximum gain, of course, was the amount that we collected, that $0.36, cents, and our maximum loss is $0.64, cents, or the difference between the size of that uh, spread, which is $1, and the amount that we collected. So um, the stock finished this week at $247.37, so it was uh, you know $0.37 cents higher than, than where we sold it. Our spread finished the week, at least uh, it's being marked for 50 cents. So if you tried to exit it, you would actually lose 14 cents, but there's absolutely no reason to exit the spread. It's doing exactly what we want it, which essentially we want the stock to either sit still or go lower so that we can keep our, our, our credit that we received on that spread. So this spread is still out of the money. We will absolutely stay in it. Um, where we just want the stock to finish lower than $249 at expiration. So that's three weeks from now. We're going to stay in and uh, make sure that we try and protect the premium or at least keep the premium that we received for selling that spread, which was $0.36. Cents. So that one is, of course, that, that trade is also going the way we want. So let's stay in it. The final spread, which was what I received a little bit of feedback on, I'll just say this, you know, sometimes in life when a when a trade looks too good to be true, it actually is. And not always. Um, there's actually been, there, uh, if you look back to the show that we did, uh, that I did back on, uh, I believe it was April the, oh, we'll call it the, the, the 18th or so, 18th or 19th. It was episode uh, number five of the podcast. So if you listen back to episode number five of the podcast, we pointed out a debit spread on the diamonds, the ETF for the Dow Jones Index that basically worked out. It did a 100% gain uh, in a matter of one week. So, you know, those do come, uh, those do happen every now and then, but this one did not. The debit spread that I looked at last week the on XLF looked fantastic uh, on both the call side and the put side of the spread. And so I looked at a combination debit spread that would have locked in an unbelievable profit while also limiting any downside risk. Well, it was actually too good to be true, and uh, I'll be the first to, to state that I wish I had caught it, obviously caught it on Monday morning. The prices that were showing on Yahoo Finance were not prices that could be executed at the opening of trading on Monday. So um, I'm sorry if I got your hopes up. I certainly had mine up and couldn't wait to put that trade on on Monday morning. That trade had me salivating all weekend long for sure. And it wasn't executable. When I looked at the prices that were happening in the market, it became very clear to me that the prices I had used in last week's podcast were incorrect. So my apologies uh, once again. You could not have made that trade. Trust me, I tried. So we'll just take our loss there, or take, the, take the hit. There's no loss because there was no trade. It was more just a bit of hurt emotion. So we'll take our, our licking and keep on ticking, dive into this week's episode, uh, this week's trades at least. I'm happy with the other two trades that were actionable last week. They would have made you money and hopefully we'll get uh, three for three or actually four. I'm going to give you four trades this week. So one extra trade to make up for last week. So this week, um, our covered call that we're going to look at, we're going to start off with a company called Therapeutics MD. And that is going to be, that is symbol TXMD, Texas X-Ray Michael David. With stock right now sitting at $6.40, we're looking to sell the June 7 call and collect $0.60. Cents. So the total gain, if this stock finishes above $7, is $1.20. And that would obviously, uh, between the 120 of stock, the 60 cents that we collect from selling the option and the 60 cents that we collect from the stock gain, that totals to a total of 120 or 
uh, 18% return in three weeks on your on your money. And what I love about this spread is even if you decide to buy the stock, right? You're going to buy 100 shares and that's $640. And you would sell the option, so you're going to collect 60 cents or $60. So right off the bat, you know, this is such a a low costing trade if you're wanting to stick your your toe into the options game just to see if it's if it's real or if it makes sense this is a i mean this one is so low cost um i really hope many of you um put it on and if you do why don't you email me i'd love to just walk you through it you can email me of course at eric at the weekly i'm always uh interested in helping people put on real trades because this is a real market and you can certainly make money in it so that's it we're going to be looking to sell the june 7 call on symbol txmd against stock that we would own a stock right now if you were to buy 100 shares on monday the closing price friday was six dollars 40 cents so that's it hoping to make 18 percent return there in three weeks our next spread that we're looking at is on iwm This is actually a stock that or an option that I used to trade down at the CBOE on the floor of the CBOE back in the mid 2000s. So I'm always happy when I look back and I see a couple of trades that are worth putting on in this symbol. This is the ETF for the Russell 2000 index. And we're going to be looking at selling the June 163, 163 half call spread. We're going to sell that uh, for 19 cents. So we'll collect 19 cents on a 50 cent spread, right? It's 50 cents wide. So ultimately our maximum gain is gonna be the amount that we collect when we start, that's the 19 cents. Our maximum loss is going to be 31 cents. So we're looking at collecting basically 38% on return on our risk capital in three weeks. So again, I love options because you get the possibility of getting such high return on a on, on a small amount of money. It also allows you to just make more trades. And if you're making positive trades, let's say that your run rate is 60% for every uh, 60% of your trades or wins. Well, in that scenario, in theory, the more trades that you do, your odds are always going to be better than 50-50. So they're, they're leaning in your favor, so there's a good chance you're going to make some money. So I feel that way on options, and it's a good thing. Our final two trades, and uh, we're doing two trades for the debit spread to make to make uh, to offset my um, faux pas last weekend with detailing a trade that actually couldn't be executed. We're going to stick in IWM and look at for our first one. So this time around, we're looking at the June. 163 half 162 half put spread so this is an in the money put spread we're looking to pay 61 cents for this in the money put spread so that means that our maximum loss of course is the amount of money that we pay for it the 61 cents our maximum gain on this spread is going to be the difference between the strikes which was one dollar minus the amount of money that we took in 61 cents and that leads to a 39 cents maximum maximum gain so 39 cents a 39 cents profit on 61 cents comes out to a 63 percent return on your money in three weeks and i keep pointing out the three weeks because the june options and i'm looking at the the monthly option not the individual weeklies so the june monthly option expiration is going to be on friday june the 15th so we have three weeks left in this trade to try to make 63 percent return on our money which would make most people's 401ks very very happy our second and final trade for this show the second debit spread rather is on nike shoe company symbol nke nancy kevin edwards we're looking at the June 71 half 72 call spread, paying 34 cents. Now this is a Nike right now. Nike stock is sitting at 72 dollars and 25 cents. So this is a this is an in the money call spread, just as our our put spread was in the money as well. But this is an in the money call spread. We're looking to pay 34 cents, and if stock sits still or goes higher, this spread will expire and be worth 50 cents at expiration. So. Our maximum loss as usual is the amount that we paid, which is 34 cents. 
that means our maximum gain is going to be 16 cents. And that's a 47% return on our capital, our at-risk capital. So our two debit spreads had a 63% possible return and a 47% possible return. Our credit spread had a 38% return on your risk capital. And of course, our covered call, which is the tends to be thought of as the least risky trade. I would challenge that, but it has an, a, a possible 18% total return in three weeks. So hopefully you guys are happy with those. As you see, you can certainly do a lot better than a uh, 10 or 12% annual return on your investment portfolio if you are active in options and take take you know calculated risk uh, with those options. You don't have to swing for the fences, thank God. So anyway, that's it for this week's show. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you enjoy learning about options. And I'm going to be putting on a webinar here in the next few weeks. I will definitely let you guys know on the show. And I'll also, uh, I've got a, a couple of Facebook groups that will also be active on that webinar. So that's it. Happy trading for you this week. And uh, again, if you have any questions, email me at eric at theweeklyoption.com. Take care and happy Memorial Day. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.